What's up guys, in this episode of Platinum Tech, we're gonna show you one of the best RB26 blocks we've come across. This block is out of Roger Knight's R34 Fear. Uh, it's been punished at over 1100 horsepower day in, day out. Why did it last? Good question. And what did it take to break it? It was a 250 shot of nitrous. This is after doing 10,000 Ks on the road, pull after pull, eight second car all day long, proved it at Cootamundra, which is a harder track to pull an eight second pass out of. But what did it take to actually break it? Was for Chris to get the and stuff heaps of boost into it and then turn, uh, turn the dial on a 250 shot of nitrous and, and basically go out of his way to try and break it. Well, he did that, he succeeded and he managed to basically peel the whole side of the block apart and it was an awesome thing to watch. <laughs> So this is a 05U non-N1 standard run-of-the-mill RB26 block. We wanted to have a closer look at it to see why it survived. And we've seen this sort of peeling away from the side of the block. It looks like it's cracked the whole way across and down here. I thought to myself, this thing's got to be a pretty amazing RB26 block. So we're going to have a look at why it survived and why it survived without any bracing and would it have lasted any longer with some bracing? Let's have a look. First test, we're gonna do our normal hardness test. RB26 blocks, as per previous videos, you know they range anywhere from about 220 on our scale with our calibration, up to around 245 is, is pretty average for a 26. Record was about 252, something like that, maybe, maybe a little bit higher. So we'll, we'll suss it out. I think it's a record. Record hardness, 258 for a 26 block. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So yeah, it's a killer. Also, we've noticed it had cracked over the oil gallery. So yes, the block was twisting. We know it was twisting. It didn't have a brace. We could have probably avoided that crack, but would a brace have avoided this peeling open of the side of the block? I don't think so. This looks like a pretty spectacular block, but we're gonna check out some sonic readings and get really in depth with it. I'm gonna just go around the cracked areas, right? So our gear's already calibrated for the block. Four and a half millimeters, pretty consistent, 4.7, almost five millimeters right on the crack. Other side of the crack. This is usually between the bores, we usually see around three mil. Under three mil, we usually condemn them. Over three mil with this kind of hardness, I'm gonna say this is leaning towards a 1300 plus horsepower block. Three and a half mil on the crack. Little, little bit of core shift there right on the crack, which is probably why it cracked on that core shift. See, we've got, if you zoom in there, we've got three and a half mil on this side of the crack and the other side of the crack, I got four and a half mil. So we've got a lump of one mil differential on either side of that crack, which goes to show we did have a fault line through there, if you will. So after testing the rest of the block, we can't find anything less than about 3.2 millimeters anywhere. What was it seeing during its life? I mean, it was sitting mainly at 1100 odd horsepower, 12, 1300 horsepower is creeping up to that big dirty shot of nitrous that blew the guts out of it. What was it making? And it's got to have been close to what, 1500 horsepower, who knows what that turbo maxes out at, plus a bit of nitrous, but yeah, that's what it took to break this block. <laughs> So having a look at the bearings, they're not murdered. They haven't spun. We have got a little bit of evidence of the block twisting. You can see it by a burnished main cap. They were walking quite a lot, which you'd expect, but there's no aeration in the bearing, which you'd see from a wet sump setup making this kind of power. Nothing spun. There's no major gouges or anything out of the bearing. They, they didn't get hot. Those bearings survived. So yeah, the high RPM, definitely help this thing stay together. The bearings actually look pretty good. If you taper the boost on 
and don't let that up ramp go and murder the block and try and pull the head off the block, it's going to help. Big RPM, it's going to help. A big turbo later on in the RPM, it's, it's shifting where that load happens and the earlier it happens with the more spike, the more damage you're going to do. So you push it all the way up the top of the rev range, you're going to have a less chance of, of hurting the engine. Saving grace for this engine, probably that it was a small capacity engine, 2.6. If it happened with a 3 litre, 2.8, 3 litre, 3.2, with that much power coming on earlier, I reckon it probably would have buckled the bearings a lot earlier, but because we were pushing it further up into the rev range, it, it was at saving, saving grace. It, it definitely helped it. So the nitrous coming in up top, if you fed that kind of nitrous in at four or 5,000 RPM, I'd say that would probably happen instantly, but because he fed it up at 6,000 RPM, it's just an air pump, right? It just, it just managed more RPM, it, it softens the blow and you can jam a bit more nitrous into it or a lot more in this case and usually get away with it for longer anyway. It, it helped it live and having the power in it right up top, it, you can see it in the bearings, the bearings did really well to survive that. You can pound some bearings really early in the torque curve but as I say, later on in the rev range, you, it's, you can get away with more, especially after peak torque rolls off, you can get away with a bit more timing, you can get away with a bit more boost up top, you'll, it'll survive. So the final sort of conclusion to why this block hung in there, it was an awesome block. I'm, I'm calling it top 5% RB26 blocks I've ever seen. It's killer. A good tune. I mean, you can always butcher a mad block with a crappy tune. You can always give it too much torque, too much boost early on, not having the RPM in it, but a combination of high RPM, mad block, and a good tune, it made it live and it survived and it shouldn't have because of any of those things letting it down it would have definitely um, led to an early you know grenading of the engine so combination of any of those things it's going to lead to um, yeah being able to do the silly things that Roger was doing with this engine and surviving for so long.